All right, so creatine, right? Uh -huh. I mean, you know creatine, right? Everyone's heard of creatine. Mm, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. But you think of, you know, the muscle heads at the gym. Yeah, yeah. You know, all these, uh, the big guys, you know. Right, right. Chasing gains and all that. Yeah. But but what if I told you that creatine, that same supplement, you know, that super common supplement, uh, is is being looked at for something totally different, something you might not even, you might not even think about, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, uh, your brain. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Creatine for your brain. I know. I know. It sounds a little crazy, right? Yeah, it does. It's not the first thing you think of. Yeah. No. No. Not at all. Yeah. But but there's actually quite a bit of research out there that that suggests that creatine could actually be really good for your brain. Okay. Um, and that's what we're going to be diving into today. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, all the research we've gathered, uh, all the evidence that suggests that creatine isn't just for bulking up, but also for potentially boosting your brain power. So basically separating the fact from the fiction. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Really looking at the science behind it. Exactly. And hopefully by the end of this, uh, you'll have a better understanding of if and how creatine supplementation could actually benefit your cognitive function. Okay. So... Um, to really kick things off, you know, why should you even consider taking creatine for your brain in the first place? Well, so, you know, the brain, right, your brain is a huge energy hog, right? Oh, yeah, right. It's it's, it's only about 2% of your body weight. Yeah, yeah. But it uses something like 20% of your energy. Wow. So it's a very energy-intensive organ, right? Yeah. And all that energy is in the form of ATP, okay. which is adenosine triphosphate. ATP, okay. And that ATP is crucial for everything that your brain does. You know, uh, thinking, learning, remembering, processing information, you yeah. know, all those good things. Like literally everything your brain does. Pretty much. It's yeah. the primary energy currency of your brain cells. Yeah. So it's very, very important. So so where does creatine come in? You know, how does creatine help with all this ATP stuff? So basically creatine helps to regenerate ATP. Okay. So, so think of it like this. Um, you have creatine phosphate. Okay. It's like a readily available energy reserve in your brain cells. Okay. So when ATP is being used up quickly, you know, during during demanding tasks, um, the creatine can donate its phosphate group to ADP. Okay. And quickly remake ATP. So it's kind of like a backup generator. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. It's like a quick quick recharge. You uh, know. Okay. I see. I see. Yeah. And this whole process is called the the phosphocreatine shuttle. Okay. And that's key to helping you maintain those high energy levels when you need them most. Okay. That's that's super interesting. So so with with more readily available energy, um, like what kind of actual benefits are we talking about here? Because I feel like this is where it gets really, really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So um, there's a few key areas that the research really points to, right? Yeah. Um, first and foremost, improvements in your memory and processing speed. Okay. Particularly in situations where your brain is under stress. Oh, interesting. So think about, you know, those times when you're when you're feeling overwhelmed yeah. or you're under pressure, right? You've got a big deadline coming up or you're about to give a presentation. Oh, yeah. I know those feelings. That's when creatine might be able to give you a little extra edge. That would be that would be huge. Yeah. yeah. So um, and then on top of that, there's also some really promising research into the potential for creatine to help protect against neurodegenerative diseases. OK, like like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Exactly. Yeah. Those are the big ones. Right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's important to say that this is still an area of ongoing research, right? Yeah, yeah. But, um, but the early findings are, are really quite intriguing, you know? Yeah. They suggest that creatine might be able to help support mitochondrial function, which is, you know, the powerhouse of the cell. Yeah. And also act as an antioxidant in the brain. Okay. So, so yeah, that's a, that's a pretty, pretty big potential benefit there. That That's huge. Um, and, and. Our source also mentions a reduction in mental fatigue. Yes, yes. So mm. studies have shown that creatine supplementation can can help to reduce mental fatigue, okay. especially during those periods of sleep deprivation. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So if you're if you're burning the midnight oil, yeah, or you're just tackling some really demanding cognitive tasks, right? Yeah. Mm. Um, creatine could potentially help you stay sharper for longer. Okay, that's 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 pretty awesome. So it's kind of like. It's kind of like a like a brain energy drink, but without the jitters and the crash. Or mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's not it's not like a like a quick fix, right? It's more like a l like a long term support system. Yeah, okay. For your brain. That makes sense. So all this is sounding really good so far. Yeah. You know, uh, but our source also makes a really important point. You know, yeah. 
not all creatine supplements are created equal. Right, right, yeah. Especially when it comes to brain health. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about that. You know, what's the difference? So, I mean, the the key takeaway here is that good old creatine monohydrate okay. is still the gold standard, especially for cognitive benefits. Okay. You know, you might see... You might see other forms of creatine out there, yeah, like creatine HCL or creatine ethyl ester. Yeah, yeah. You know, they market it as as being better absorbed. I have seen that. Right, but um, the vast majority of the research, you know, that's looked at brain function has used creatine monohydrate. Okay. So that's that's really the the one to go for if you're looking for those cognitive benefits. So all those all those like fancy new versions. They're not necessarily better for your brain. Not necessarily, no. I mean, there there might be some some slight differences. Yeah. But um, but yeah, the research really points to creatine monohydrate as being the most effective. Gotcha. For brain health. Okay, and what's also interesting is that um, creatine monohydrate is not only the most studied, but it's also generally the most affordable. Yeah, that's a big plus, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and its safety profile is very well established. Yeah, I mean, it's been studied for decades yeah so so we know that it's safe for most healthy adults yeah okay um our source also mentioned something called micronized creatine monohydrate mm -hmm. okay what's the deal with that so micronization it's it's basically a process that reduces the particle size of the creatine powder okay and what that does is it it can lead to better solubility okay and it can also be a bit gentler on your stomach Okay. It can, you know, reduce the risk of bloating for some people. So, um, so yeah, it's still creatine monohydrate, okay. but it's just a finer powder. Okay. So it might be a little more comfortable for some people to take. So it's it's easier to mix. You're saying? Yeah, it's easier to mix. It's easier on your gut. Okay. Okay. So what about what about all those like designer blends we see? Yeah. You know, the ones with all sorts of extra ingredients and stuff. Yeah, you got to be careful with those. Yeah. Um, especially when your goal is brain health. Oh. You know, a lot of times they'll include stimulants and stuff like that. Yeah. Which, you know, you don't really need those for the cognitive benefits yeah. you're looking for yeah. from creatine. Okay. So um, so it's, it's generally best to stick with the pure creatine monohydrate. Okay. So, so monohydrate is the way to go. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um, now, our source actually gives us some specific product recommendations. Okay. Uh, let's talk about those. Uh, first up is Thorn Creatine. Uh, Tell me about Thorn. So, Thorn, um, this is a micronized creatine monohydrate. Okay. Um, it's NSF certified, which means it's been independently tested okay. for quality and purity. Okay. And it doesn't contain any unnecessary fillers. Gotcha. Um, so it's it's a pretty high quality product. Yeah. Um, and it's actually a brand that's trusted by a lot of neuroscientists. Oh wow. So that kind of speaks to its credibility for right. for brain health, right? Yeah, that's that's really good. Um, and the price point is around fifty cents per serving. Okay. So it's not the cheapest option. Yeah, yeah. But it is a high quality option. Okay, so it's a little bit more of a premium option. Right. But it's focused on purity and and that finer texture. Exactly. Okay. The other recommendation is bulk supplements, pure monohydrate. Okay. Yeah. Which just sounds like, you know, it does what it says on the tin. Yeah. 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 It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, so this is a very affordable option. Right. Um, it's about 10 cents per serving. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's like dirt cheap. Yeah. Uh, but but it's still lab tested for purity. Okay. So you're, you're still getting a good quality product. Okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, it's interesting. Our source actually has... Uh, my pick. Okay. And it's Thorn. Interesting. So why why the preference for Thorn, even though it's more expensive? Well, I mean, I think I think when it comes to brain health, yeah, purity is a really big factor. Yeah. And you know, having that peace of mind that you're getting a, a really well vetted, yeah. certified product. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that's worth the extra cost for mm -hmm. a lot of people. Yeah. And and also, you know, the micronized form just yeah. has that, that smoother texture, which, you know, some people might prefer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. I mean, when you're thinking about something as, as you know, delicate as your brain, mm -hmm. you probably want to make sure you're you're putting good quality stuff in there. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So we've got the tight, you know, we've got some specific brands. Yeah. Um, What about dosage? You know, how much creatine should you actually be taking for brain health? So the good news is you don't need a ton. Okay. Um, the research suggests that a daily dose of three to five grams is 
is sufficient to see those potential cognitive benefits. Okay. Okay. And and unlike when you're trying to, you know, saturate your muscles, yeah. you don't need a loading phase oh, okay. for brain health. So no need to start off with a huge amount. Right. Yeah. Just just consistent smaller dose. Yeah, just a consistent three to five grams per day. Okay. And and our source gives some really good, really practical tips on how to actually incorporate this into your routine. Yeah, yeah. You know, like mixing it into your coffee or your water or even your oatmeal. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really tasteless. So yeah. it's easy to mix into things. Yeah. And it's really just about finding what works for you. Yeah. And, and sticking with it. Okay. So consistency seems to be like a, a recurring theme here. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've covered type, brands, dosage. Yeah. Uh, now, what about the big question? Oh, okay. You know, the question that probably pops into everyone's head, like, is it safe to take creatine long term? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. And, and it's a it's a valid concern. Yeah. Um, but the good news is that creatine is one of the most extensively studied supplements out there. OK. And and there was a, a review that came out in 2023. Oh, OK. That basically confirmed that it's safe for long term use. OK. In healthy adults. OK. So that's that's reassuring. Yeah. Um, but what about people with with pre-existing conditions like uh, specifically kidney issues? Yeah. So, I mean, the general advice is that that if you have any kind of kidney issues, you should talk to your doctor yeah. before starting any new supplement, yeah. including creatine. Um, but but it is important to note that that studies have generally shown a, a very low risk of kidney problems okay. at, at normal doses well, and, and healthy individuals. OK, that's that's good to know. Yeah. Um, you know, always better safe than sorry. Absolutely. Especially when it comes to your health. Yeah. Um, OK, now. Our source also tackles some some common questions that people have about about using creatine for for brain health. Okay. Um, let's dive into some of those. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first up, can you take creatine with other nootropics? And and just to clarify for people who may not be familiar, nootropics are are basically substances that are thought to improve cognitive function. Right. So can you mix them? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, in fact, um, the source even suggests some some interesting combinations. Okay. Like pairing creatine with omega-3 fatty acids. Oh. Or or lion's mane mushroom. Oh, interesting. And and they call this a, a cognitive power combo. So the idea is that that these different supplements might might support brain health through different mechanisms. Okay. And so by combining them, you know, you might be able to get like a synergistic effect. So you could you could potentially create like a little brain boosting stack. Yeah, exactly. OK, that's that's pretty cool. Um, another common concern and one that we, we kind of touched on earlier is is bloating. Yeah. You know, will yeah. creatine make you bloated? So some people might experience some people might experience some initial water retention. Okay. When they first start taking creatine, and that can lead to a feeling of bloating. Yeah. But um, you know, as we talked about before, using a micronized version. Yeah. Can help to to minimize that risk. Okay. Because of that finer particle size. Okay. Good yeah. to know. Good to know. Yeah. Um. Here's another. Here's another practical question. Okay. When is the best time to take creatine for brain health? Yeah, that's a that's a common one. Yeah. Um, but honestly, the timing doesn't really matter. Right. You know, what matters is consistency. Okay. Just taking it every day. Okay. Um, you know, the source uses the example of of incorporating it into your morning matcha. Yeah. But but really, you know, just find a routine that works for you. Yeah. And yeah. stick with it. So it's more about making it a habit. Yeah. Than hitting a specific time. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Um, finally, here's one that might surprise you. Okay. Are vegan creatine sources better? So the answer to that is no. Okay. All creatine supplements are vegan friendly okay. because they're synthetically manufactured. Okay. So there's no need to to specifically seek out a a vegan form of creatine. Yeah. Okay. That clears that up. Yeah. Okay. So we've really dug deep into this. Yeah, we have. Uh, final thoughts. What What are the key takeaways? Okay. So I mean, I think the overarching message here is that creatine monohydrate. Yeah. Is a promising option for for boosting your brain power. OK. You know, it's well researched. Yeah. It's relatively inexpensive. Yeah. Especially the non micronized form. Yeah. Um, and it has a good safety profile. Yeah. For healthy adults. So, I mean, it's it's definitely worth considering. Absolutely. And and the top recommendations really boil down to those two. Right. Yeah. Thorn and bulk supplements. Thorn for the purity and, right. and the smoother texture. Yeah. And bulk supplements for affordability. Right. 
So it really comes down to to your priorities. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and it's important to remember that those those brain benefits, they're not going to be immediate. Right. Right. Yeah. It's it's something that that takes time. Yeah. You need to be consistent. You yeah. need to take it every day. Yeah. For for several weeks. Yeah. To right. really see those those benefits, okay. but but if you do, mm -hmm. you know, you could potentially experience, you know, clearer thinking, smarter working. Improved memory, yeah, all those good things. Yeah, I mean, if if you're if you're looking for a safe and accessible way to to give your your gray matter a little extra support, mm -hmm. yeah, the the information we've explored today suggests that creatine monohydrate might be might be worth considering. Yeah, I think I think it's definitely a, a valuable tool yeah. to have in your in your arsenal. Yeah, for brain health. Okay, so to to sum it all up, you know, this deep dive strongly suggests. The creatine monohydrate isn't just for the gym anymore. Right. It could be a, a really valuable supplement for supporting your cognitive health. Yeah, I think we've I think we've seen that pretty clearly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that that brings us to a final thought for for you all to chew on. You know, mm -hmm. given the the potential for such a safe and readily available way to to support brain function, you know, what other everyday supplements or lifestyle changes might have like underestimated cognitive benefits? Right. Yeah. You know. It, it really makes you wonder about the the broader landscape of, of brain health and, and the proactive steps that we could all be taking. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Yeah, so there you have it. Yeah, there you have it. Um, I hope you found this deep dive informative and, and engaging. Yeah, me too. And, and as always, you know, do your own research. Yeah. Talk to your doctor. Yes. And, and make the best decisions for your, your own brain health. Absolutely. All right. All right. Well... Uh, until next time. See you then. Yeah.